Hello friends, welcome. Now friends, today I am going to deal with a very complicated topic. Now this topic can make you very confused. So I'm just warning you, but don't worry. I will try to make this as simple as possible and we will go step by step. Now, this uh, video has got triggered because of my one of my viewers question where there was a misunderstanding that latency is only in the internet. Because when I was comparing uh, VOLT with VONR, the, uh, the question was that, uh, you know, whether these are of same quality. I said, yes, but there is a difference in latency and the viewer understood that latency is only in the internet, which is not. So therefore, in order to make things very clear, I have created this video and this slide deck. And now this slide deck could be a little bit complicated, just be with me, but you will understand everything. The title of the slide deck is why 5G has lower latency than LT, right? This is the slide deck. Now, in order for you to understand why 5G has a lower latency than, than LT, some background information is required. Otherwise, it will become a little difficult, right? Uh, I can do without the background information also, but it is it is good in, it is good that I provide that background inf information in order for completeness. Otherwise, it will become too superfluous. It will not make much sense. So, in order for you to understand this, you need to understand what is frame. Frame is true for all wireless communication or even optical communication. It's a it's a some some kind of manageable unit. It manages user information which is getting carried. It's almost like it's a container, right, of a good strain. So you have a container of a good strain which is doing what? It is managing goods. Similarly, you can consider frame as a container of a good, good strain. Okay, that's all. Now, typically in LT as well as in NR, this is 10 milliseconds long because these are all in time units. Frames are all in time units because it has to go like this. You have to keep on going in a one direction, one time unit, you know, uh, continuously keep repeating in every one, one, in one single time unit. Now, conventionally in past, in 3G, we use 10 millisecond frame. And therefore, in LT and in R also, we are using 10 millisecond frame because of some historical reason and backward compatibility and synchronization. That's all, right? Okay. Now there is another concept in 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 case of LT, which is called OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Now frames by itself will not do anything. Okay. Why? Because frames have to be transmitted from one point to another. You have to transmit this frame from this point to this. Now, in order for this frame to be transmitted, it has to be carried over a system which is robust. You can't carry this frame just like that. You need to create a robust system. Normally, what we do, you have a bandwidth, right? You have a filter and you throw the information within this, with, uh, in this filter, right? But problem is that you can't really have a filter which is flat, right? Because designing a flat filter is a big problem and they really spill over on the side. And therefore, what you have done is that you have broken this filter into small compartments, right? Which are called subcarriers. That is called orthogonal frequency division multiplexing because these subcarriers are orthogonal in, in nature and they don't interfere with each other and they prevent this problem of creating a flat filter. That's all, friends. Okay. So, OFDMA subcarrier divides the bandwidth into narrow frequency solved. This helps in managing multipath fading efficient uh, resource allocation. So, we have already seen LT frame structure. It is a 10 millisecond long frame divided into 10 subframes of 1 millisecond. So, frame has been further divided into a 10 subframe of 1 millisecond. And then, these subframes, if you look at this 1 millisecond, it contains two slots of 0.5 millisecond long. Just be with me and kind of, you know, have some trust with me and just go with this data. Don't get overwhelmed. Now, there is another concept here, friends, which is symbol and subcarrier mapping. And now before I go to th through these bullets, I need to show you, tell you what symbol is in wireless communication, which is important to understand. So otherwise, we will not understand anything going forward. So the basic concept 
is a symbol represent a group of bits transmitted together as one unit. Now, you it is it is don't get confused with frame is carrying this group of bits. Okay, the frame actually encapsulates this group of bits, but symbol is a group of bits which together you know a, a group of bits transmitted together as one unit. Why? In digital modulation, symbols are mapped to specific waveform. It is a modulation technique. So you need to modulate your, your message and that you convert it into symbols, friends. For example, if you see here, QPSK maps two bits into one symbol, 0000011011. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Like that, you can actually keep on increasing your modulation scheme. The number of bits are going to increase. OFDMA symbol, an OFDMA symbol is a composite waveform made up of many subcarriers. And now we are going to go, just forget this. I'm going to go into the this particular slide. Now you have understood symbol. Symbol is nothing but group of bits, okay? Now it has to be mapped with subcarriers. Now what are subcarriers? I told you that in OFDMA, you break the channel, the whole filter into smaller, smaller frequency subcarriers. Now I'll show you the diagram so that you understand. So this is the bandwidth here, and these are broken into subcarriers where the symbols are running. Can you see this? There are multiple symbols which are running in these subcarriers. So these are 15 kilohertz subcarriers, orthogonal in nature, and this is the total bandwidth here. And this is the time. Time axis is here in this direction. Okay. So this is the OFDMA subcarrier, right? Now, where were we? So we were here. So yeah. So what is happening is the symbol and subcarrier mapping. Each slot carries seven OFDMA sim sim uh, symbols. Now, from where this seven has come, it is important to understand. When I say seven, what does it mean? These seven. And this is a subcarrier of 15 kilohertz carrying seven. Okay, seven symbols. From where this seven has come? Now, seven is a very simple number to calculate. Why? Because this is 15 kilohertz, friends. Now, if you divide this 15 kilohertz, kilohertz by one, because that's how you calculate that what should be the symbol size, you get a certain symbol size. And that is symbol size is 66.67 microsecond. You do it, you can, you're, you can easily find it. Now, this 66.67 microsecond has to be fitted into this 0.5 millisecond slot. I told you that in one particular, um, so far, in, in one LT frame, which is 10 milliseconds long, you have got 10 subframe and this subframe, each subframe consists of two slots and each slot is 0.5 millisecond of width. Now you can fit in this slot seven, you know, symbols. That's all. That is as simple as that. And this bandwidth that you have of 15 kilohertz is carrying seven of these symbols. It's very simple now because this is what? This is one slot of 0.5 millisecond. So the slot by slot, this kind of goes over, you know, as the time progresses, slots are just kind of going like a good strain, right? So one slot of 0.5 millisecond, then the next slot of one of 0.5 millisecond. So you have now 14 symbols. You got it now? Like that, you can keep on transmitting all this information in parallel. That's all it. So you have got, let's say if you have a bandwidth of 10 megahertz, each and everything is divided into 15 kilohertz. You can imagine that how many symbols you can carry and that's how the frame gets transmitted from one point to another. Now that there is a difference between LT and NR frame structure. So that you need to understand, you have to compare that. So both the frames are of duration 10 milliseconds. You see NR is also 10 millisecond. Subframes are also same. Right, because of backward compatibility issue. But slot for slough frame is different. Here, if you see the subcarrier pace spacing is 15 kilohertz. When I say subcarrier pacing means what? This is one subcarrier, this is another subcarrier, this is another subcarrier. These are spaced by 15 kilohertz because the width of these subcarriers is 15 kilohertz. So therefore, these are all spaced by 15 kilohertz. That's all. So here you will see that slot per subplane to 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. But in case of NR, the slot size and the subframe size are variable in nature. You can have a, a, a slot of only two, right? Uh, uh, and two, four, eight, 
based on subcarrier spacing. Because why it is like this, I'll, let me explain to you. Because when you have to transmit information of a smaller symbol size, let's say if the symbol size is not that big of 66 microsecond, it is much smaller. You need a subcarrier which is going to be, let's say if you want to transmit a information which is 66.67 divided by 2 symbol size. Then if you do one by this, it will become 30 kilohertz. And therefore, these subcarriers are going to become higher width. You understand now? Simple as that. Okay. Now, OFDMA symbol plus slot, 7 for normal cyc cyclic prefix. I don't want to get into friends. Otherwise, you'll get completely lost. Assume that there is a small amount of information added to those symbols. And that becomes because 7, right? So, uh, added to the subframe, which makes it 7 symbols. Okay. Here it is 14 for 15 kilohertz subcarrier facing, uh, spacing. So this is what I was trying to explain to you. Symbol duration. So if the symbol duration increases, subcarrier spacing, spacing will decrease. One upon subcarrier spacing, right? So as you go increase your subcarrier facing, symbol duration will go down. Simple cap, simple thing. It means nothing. There is no rocket science. Now why we have chosen 15 kilohertz subcarrier face spacing? It was chosen because it was a trade-off between delay spread and tolerance and spectral efficiency. Because if you choose too small, a subcarrier spacing is, is become very difficult to transmit. Because what will happen is the subcarrier spacing is becomes less. One upon f will become, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this one. This this thing will become. Uh, you cannot make it less because if you make it less, the symbols will become very very long. It will become very inefficient. But if you increase it. If you increase the subcarrier facing, then the symbols are going to become very, very short, right? And that way is going to create a lot of problem in transmission. So 15 kilohertz is a result in the symbol duration of 66.7 microsecond in case of LT because LT was an old technology, could not handle symbols of higher duration, right? It helps mitigate inter-symbol interference in urban multipath environment. Compatible with fast Fourier trans uh, transformation sizes and simplifies implementation of device because it was an older technology. You could not have implemented smaller symbol sizes. So why 10 millisecond frame length, which we have already discussed. I'm not going to go into this. Now comes the key part of the discussion. What is latency in mobile network? What is why we call what is latency? Latency is equal to time from sending a packet to getting a response. Simple. You are, you are seeking, you are sending a packet and you want somebody to respond back. That is a latency. If he, if he responds back in a longer duration of time, it means the latency is high. Now, this depends upon TTI. Now, this is a very important concept. TTI is transmission time interval. Now, what is transmission time interval? Let's say packet arrives at the base station. And it says that, please carry me along, right? So this is the base station here. And there is one packet which arrives at this base station. It's saying that, please carry me. Base station is not going to carry the packet immediately and, and throw it in the RF wave. No, it's going to wait till the transmission interval is over. So there is a certain transmission interval, which is important to understand before which the packet will get transmitted. And because of this transmission time interval, there is an inherent latency in the mobile internet. Higher the transmission time interval, the higher will be the latency. And that is why 4G has got a higher latency because the TTI is one millisecond in case of 4G, but it is much lower in case of 5G. Means when a packet arrives at the base station, you don't have to wait for one millisecond before you transmit. You can transmit at a much, much shorter duration. So shorter TTI, faster scheduling, lower latency. As simple as that. Now, if you see here, uh, what it is saying, LT frame and TTI structure. You know that LT has got 10 millisecond. We already discussed into 10 subframe, one millisecond each. Now, each sub subframe consists of two slot. Of 0.5. So we have got seven OFDMA slot per slot. The subcarrier frequency is 15 kilohertz. We are just for repetition. TTI is one millisecond, 14 OFDMA symbol. Latency floor is one millisecond. That is the reason why. Now, this 14 OFDMA symbol, 
let me go this to this picture because that will be come. So what will happen? This is like a good strain. Seven is carried, then again seven will come. So when this seven plus seven, fourteen symbols get accumulated in the base station, then only the whole transmission will become begin. Otherwise, the base station is not going to push the the information ahead. That is the reason why this uh, this uh, this uh, this inherent inherent latency of one millisecond in case of LT. Now you understand. This is called the TTI structure. The TTI is important because transmission. Tra this is the full form of TTI is transmission time interval. Okay. Now, five G NR frame and TTI flexibility. Now here we have seen the NR is ten millisecond subscarrier sub carrier facing can be can be fifteen uh, kilohertz. It can go up to higher also. But for three gigahertz band, for bands which are three gigahertz and below, it is fifteen kilohertz only. For higher bands like three point five millimeter wave, the carrier sub carrier spacing increases where the symbol size has to be made very very short. Why? Because those are those are bands which do not transmit very far. That is the reason why. So you can you can live with a shorter uh, symbol size. Otherwise, what if you transmit very very far? Then what will happen? This the distortion. The chances of distortion can be very very high. Right. So therefore, in NR there is a flexible TTI. Means there are mini slots of two, four, seven symbols. Here there is no flexibility. In case of LT. There is no flexibility here. The TTI is only of 14 OFDMS symbol, but here the TTI can be very flexible. Can you see this? And therefore, the scheduler can send packets earlier. Latency is less than one millisecond. That's the only critical difference between an LT, uh, you know, technology and a 5G technology because of the TTI, which is very very flexible, and they have done so. Using enhanced technological capabilities, which is beyond the scope of this presentation. Otherwise, I will go into a different dimension altogether. Now, LT versus NR latency comparison in 15 kilohertz. We have already seen that in LT, one millisecond TTI. It waits for the full subframe to transmit. It has to wait. It pulls the packet to get accumulated, and then it transmits. In NR, mini slots as low as two symbols, quicker response. Both uses 15 kilohertz, you know, sub carrier spacing below 3 gigahertz, same symbol duration, but NR flexibility TTI provides the latency advantage. Now, latency will become much, much more impactful if you go in the higher frequency band in case of NR, right? But I was trying to compare with 700, 800, etc. So even with a 15 kilohertz sub carrier, because when you are using 15 kilohertz, not 30 kilohertz, your symbols are of shorter duration. When your symbols are of shorter duration, means what? If you are using, let's say, thirty kilohertz, you will have a much, much lower latency. But if you are only going to use fifteen kilohertz sub carrier spacing, then you have going to have the same symbol duration both for NR as well as for LT. But you are not going to get any advantage. But LT has got this inflexibility of one millisecond TTI, whereas in case of NR, you can have a flexible TTI, and that is why. Even when you have the same symbol size, you still get a better latency. So the final takeaway here is that NR latency advantage comes from TTI, not just sub carrier spacing. Important. Even at the same symbol duration, NR can transmit faster. It enables ultra reliable latency communication, right? And critical for real time app gaming, remote surgery, and automation. So that's all, friend. This is just the abbreviation. You can just pause the video and have a look at it. Uh, that's all in this presentation. This was a little complicated. I don't know whether you got it or not. I tried my level best. It could have been done better with animation, but I don't have the time to create all this animation and the resources. So thanks for listening till the end, and I'll come back with a new video and a new topic next time. Thank you very much, friends.